after a long journey, Chris and his Pokemon are on their way home to work on their next review-based adventure. Are we seriously doing this whole narrator shtick again? Um, do we really have to do this? I mean, I was just heading home. Well, I, I mean, you did walk right in front of me. That's kind of the rules. Yeah, so what? Look, I have been standing here for weeks now. Can you just give me this? <sighs> All right, fine. Excellent. All right, well then, I choose you. That doesn't look like any Pokemon I've ever seen. I found it under a truck. Oh, I, I suppose. Anyway, I choose you, Pikachu! Pika! Alright, Pikachu, use Tackle! <laughs> you think that weak old attack is gonna do any damage to my- Wait, what? What? I... What? Excellent! Man, I feel weird. Ah, you'll be fine. We'll just take you to a Pokemon Center. There's like one in every town we visit. Well, sir, I believe you owe me a few Poke Dollars for that... bad... toll. Oh. The first three original Pokemon movies on Blu-ray? Oh my goodness, this seems too good to be true. Oh, it is. Well, I guess no harm. I could still do a video review on them, I suppose. With their latest battle finished, our heroes were ready to face their next challenge. Unaware that Pokemon centers are not in Pallet Town. Son of a... With his beaver cap and his checkered tie, let's see what he has to say. What's he got for us this time? They're probably a new race. It's a guilty pleasure. It's a comfort measure. Shine the lights, shoot the camera, smile for the world and panorama. He likes to impersonate Gottfried. Hey everybody, Aficionados Chris here, and yes, if you can believe it or not, there actually are Blu-rays for the first three original Pokemon movies that were released theatrically in the United States. Pokemon was a very special part of my childhood. Back in, I want to say about 1998, 1999, I got my first Pokemon game for my Game Boy Color, Pokemon Silver. When I got a Nintendo 64 for Christmas, I had Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium 2. I collected as many trading cards as I could, swapping them and trading them with friends. Had many of the Burger King tie-in toys that happened for at least the first two or three movies that had the tie-in collectibles going on. I had the beanies, I had VHS tapes of the show. It was just absolute madness, and I loved every second of it. Of course, as I got older, the Pokemon fascination sort of uh, died off a bit, but it always still had a soft spot in my heart simply for all the nostalgia that it gave me. And as the years go on, Pokemon seems to have never died off and is actually just as popular, if not more popular, than it was back then, so Hey, great for that franchise to keep going strong after, what, 20 years going on now? And since my fascination shifted over from Pokemon collecting to DVD and Blu-ray collecting, I was very disappointed that I couldn't own the Pokemon films on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah, there are DVDs of the first three original films, but the biggest problem for me is that none of them are in widescreen. And, well, they were theatrical films, I want to see them presented in the aspect ratio that they were intended to be seen in. One day I was talking to my brother and he said that he found not one, but all three of the original Pokemon films on Blu-ray on eBay. Told me to check him out and that I should consider buying them and doing a video review on them, considering that he was thinking about buying them as well. Well, I couldn't pass up the chance, so I bought all three of them and I cannot wait to talk about them with you guys. I think first things first, let's talk about Pokemon, the first movie. Now, as far as the bootlegs go, I can safely say that the first movie is unfortunately not the most well uh, presented as far as packaging goes. The first thing all of you are probably going to notice is that the left side of the Blu-ray looks a little off. What really troubles me about this is that this is a mistake that could have been very easily avoided if a black layer was just added to the whole left side, making it blend more and, well, not making it look so disjointed. More issues arise on the back, the first one being Charizard's wing seems to have a photoshopped magic wand that wasn't properly done, with colors that appear to have been filled in that weren't supposed to be there, as well as the running time of the whole film being, well, completely wrong. Claiming to be about 60 minutes, this movie actually runs a little over 90 minutes. 
I noticed that this particular entry into the original trilogy is the one that usually gets the most, uh, well, criticism or hatred or whatever you want to call it. In fact, I believe this movie was actually featured in a book of the uh, worst movies of all time. It's been on many, many worst lists and... I mean, yeah, I can kind of see where a lot of people are coming from because, oh, it's a movie about a trading card, RPG, blah, 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 and all this other stuff, and, you know, mixed messages. I get all that. However, uh, the version on this Blu-ray is a version of the film that I have never seen. Uh, it includes scenes that were what I thought to have been deleted from the theatrical run that I saw, but upon some research I noticed that some of these scenes got dubbed for, like, anniversary specials or something, so... Whoever made this Blu-ray actually got a hold of those and re-edited them so they were fit back into the movie the way they were supposed to be. So, really, this is probably the most complete version of the movie I've ever seen. And I honestly think that it makes it a better movie. I mean, yeah, I watched it without nostalgia goggles and thought, you know, this isn't that bad a movie with all these new scenes put back in that I have never seen. So maybe if you watch the original Japanese cut, if you don't have the Blu-ray, of course, or if you could find this one, you can actually see the full cut in English, which was a big thing that differs from the second movie, which unfortunately has a problem in that regard. Now, it's no surprise for kids when they got these movies, some edits were made, some changes, uh, you know, regional stuff, yada yada. Now, I think the second movie, compared to all three of them, has the most edited problems. Let me, let me explain. Uh, there are not one but two scenes in the whole film that I guess were never dubbed, at least I don't remember them in the film, so I guess they were just cut from the four kids distribution of the film, and therefore no English dubs of them exist. Uh, which is jarring, because they're not very long scenes, they're like at least five to ten seconds apiece, they're not very long. Uh, one of them features the character Tracy, who, well many fans have said was a bad idea to cut his bit because it's kind of the only useful thing he does in the entire movie. But since they're not dubbed, when you watch this in English, instead of that scene being removed, it still plays it, but the audio just stops. So the movie goes silent for a few seconds, and then when it goes back to where it originally was dubbed, it shifts back into its English dialogue. So personally, it's a little jarring, especially if you're you know, someone like me and you wanted to see this film in English, it can throw you off for a few seconds thinking maybe there's something wrong with your Blu-ray player, but trust me, nothing's wrong with your player. That is just how the audio is put into this particular release. However, I would recommend, at least for this one only, that you watch it in its original Japanese language with the English subtitles because, well, you'll end up getting the full experience of the film without any random audio cuts because four kids never bothered to dub those scenes. That's really the only issue I have with this particular bootleg. Other than that, the presentation's fine. I think the cover art could be you know, slightly better, but hey, they're bootlegs. I mean, you're not really going to get the highest quality, but as long as you get the movies on a format that you prefer, uh, you got to take it or leave it. Now, finally, let's talk about the third movie, which, in my honest opinion, I think is the best of all three movies. I think that's a very cliche thing to say, but I honestly believe that. It is the best of the three. I think it has the best story. I think it has the best atmosphere. I think it has the best presentation. Just all around, great film, and I think, really I think people who aren't big fans of the franchise could check this one out and still enjoy it as its own movie. And fitting that this is the, in my opinion, the best one of the bunch, it's probably one of the better looking bootlegs. Uh, and what I mean is, all these, for the record, all these have great picture quality and the audio quality is good, um, with the exception of 2000, because, like I said, the audio cut, but the audio still sounds fine besides that. So these are presented very well. Considering, I believe these prints came from a Blu-ray box set that uh, is only sold in Japan. And you know, let's talk about that for a second. The best source I could find was a review of the box set on BulbaGarden.net. However, in said review, it clearly states that there is no English dub for the first three movies in the box set. However, another review on the same site for a similar product, a DVD version of the set, clearly states that the first three movies are in fact bilingual. So yeah, as you can see, I mean, if you want to, you know, take a gamble and buy that box set, you can. It is available on Amazon.co.jp, and I've seen it on eBay listings a few times. Uh, in fact, hey, how much is that box set? No, 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 in American. Ooh. I mean, I mean, hey, if you want an official release, go right ahead and take that gamble. Maybe the English audio is in it, but... I don't know, for that price, I wouldn't risk it, which is why I got these bootlegs instead. 
And back to Pokemon the Movie 3, which I do notice now, they don't have the movie written on it, just as Pokemon 3. I guess, eh, not, a, not a total loss, but I think the presentation of the cover is a little better. Uh, it looks a little more organized and, well, honestly, it just looks more like a real Blu-ray, uh, you know, with minor exceptions where, you know, bootleg looks obvious, but I think it's the better looking of all three of them. As well, I should mention, this may disappoint a lot of nostalgic viewers of these films that these three movies do not, I repeat, do not come with the short films that preceded the films in theaters. All the Pikachu shorts, at least in Japan, are only sold on their own disc in box sets. There's a DVD box set that I mentioned earlier that has it on its own disc, and the Blu-ray box set has it on its own disc. However, the Blu-ray box set has Pikachu and Pichu omitted because apparently in Japan, it's banned because its original narrator was busted for drug possession, and, well, apparently in Japan that's a real serious crime to a point where you'll ban a whole cartoon because their voice is in it instead of, I don't know, redubbing it? It doesn't make any sense to me. So, really, if you have the DVDs, those have the short films, so if you still want to have the short films in your collection and are at least somewhat considering getting these bootlegs just so you can have the films in high definition in English partially, with the exception of the second movie. Uh, I'd say still hold on to your DVDs so you can at least have the short films in your collection. But, hey, I mean, the DVD has said it's bilingual from Japan, so maybe you can buy that one instead, have that disc, if you have a region-free player, of course. And not only do these not include the short films, as you might expect, none of these have any extras of any kind, which the American DVDs, of course, do. So I would still say, Hold on to those DVDs, if you have them, that is. As I understand, they've been out of print for quite some time, but if you did buy those DVDs, hold on to them for the short films and the extras, because these Blu-rays are bare bones, but heck, they're a better presentation of the movie than those DVDs are. I should also mention that the disc art on all three of these movies doesn't seem to match any pre-existing disc art that I can find on the internet, so my guess is that these are customs, and I honestly think they look a lot better than the ones sold. So, the real question is, would I recommend that people, fans, whatever, pick up these bootleg Blu-rays where they could find them? Well, it's half and half, really. Uh, I'm partially satisfied with these purchases, considering, like I said, you can't get these movies, at least in America, on Blu-ray, the Japanese Blu-ray has stated, or at least the review I saw states, that the first three don't have English dub, so that's not a good deal for me. I can't risk that. And, yeah, the Pokemon 2000 is missing some audio because it was never dubbed, but I can get past that considering right now, as it stands, with the 20th anniversary coming up, this is the best we're probably going to get for these three movies. I don't see Warner Brothers releasing these on Blu-ray anytime soon. In fact... I don't even think they have the rights to the dubs anymore. I mean, I'm probably wrong. But as far as the foreseeable future goes, this is probably your best option. Uh, if you're someone who doesn't like getting bootlegs because you'd rather support an official release, an official product, there's absolutely no rush to get these bootlegs. But if you're a collector like me and you love to add a little variety, well, to your collection, you want to have some weird, obscure little bootlegs for films that a lot of people, or at least Pokemon fans and fans of anime or whatever know about, I would recommend getting these simply, well, for conversation starters. They're really nice pieces to my collection. I think it adds a great variety. And I'm just really happy to have these movies presented in a format and presented in an aspect ratio that I wanted to see these in for many, many years. And that they just look so good on top of that. Like I keep saying, with the exception of the second movie, which does have some audio issues, I do think for 20 bucks a pop, which is how much I paid for these, I think they're pretty darn good bootlegs and honestly would recommend them to people who just want to have these movies in their collection on Blu-ray and just can't take it anymore or, or preferably don't want to fork over all that money for that Japanese box set which may or may not include the English dub anyway so there you go for that. So that's it for my look at the bootleg Pokemon Blu-rays. I hope you enjoyed the video and please have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Welcome. To the stadium. Get ready for the ultimate showdown. Mew versus Mew 2. Bring all your skill. Bring all your courage. The Pokemon match of all time is here.
training is over. Catch it. Pokemon, the first movie, and the mini-movie Pikachu's Vacation, now available on video cassette and DVD. With the never-before-seen story of Mewtwo's origin, an exclusive sneak preview of Pokemon, the second movie, and an all-new Mewtwo game card inside specially marked video cassettes and DVDs. Pikachu!